Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. It's nine o'clock. It's time for another video. And I am super excited because I have an absolute legend, in my opinion, coming back to the channel again to talk about some super exciting news. This is somebody who I consider to be not only a friend, but one of the most creative people in the planet. In fact, he's literally lectures about how to be more creative penguin magic creator of the year created some of the best magic tricks ever and we're going to hear some super exciting news about what's going to be happening moving forward as well the one and only super amazing kyle purnell how you doing kyle i'm great greg hey i thought we said that you would hype hype me up where's the hype well, you know what? I mean, it's not hype when it's true, when you back <laughs> it, right? It's not, and you, you know, I I wax lyrical about you forever on this channel, but you, you, I will always have you on here over and over again because you're one of those few people who has never had a miss as far as I'm concerned. You've, you've worked with Vanishing Git. You've worked with pretty much every single major production company. And obviously you're going to have your own stuff coming out, which we're going to talk about later. But whoever you work with, whether it's a download, whether it's a physical product, it's always a barn buster. It's always a super clever method. It's always practical. It's always commercial. And it's always really well thought out. And there's very few people in this industry that can have that can claim to have a record as strong as yours. So I think you're brilliant. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Was there a question in there? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, okay, let's let's ask you a question. Like, since I had you on the channel last time, you yeah. had amazing stuff. Last time I spoke to you, um, you were just about ready to bring out Lightyear. Mm, that's right, that, yeah. That became one of the best-selling tricks of Penguin's uh, year. And you went on Pen and Teller Fool Us and right. absolutely killed it, man. Did you <laughs> Did you Thank enjoy you. it? Was that a great experience? It was crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a really good experience. They, you know, uh, so I always say when I, so, sometimes I work with Cosmo, right? And when, whenever I work with Cosmo, I always say he treats you like a king. Like he takes you out to like the, the, the fancy restaurant. He says, get as many drinks as you want, as, you know, whatever food you want. Money's, you know, just a number kind of thing. Um, Penn and Teller, uh, like the people there, uh, I, I say that to say that while they don't treat you like a king, they treat you with a tremendous amount of respect and uh, incredibly cordial, but because they don't have the luxury of treating you like a king because they have a show to make, right? And so that that's their priority, but they take care of you, mm. full stop, right? They they take care of you. They, um, you know, they, they give you a, a stipend for as uh, for like, 250 bucks uh for all the meals throughout the few days that that you're there which is more than enough even in vegas uh and then they uh they put you up in the rio which is bar none the nicest hotel i've ever been at um and you know it, it was it was it went on it went off without a hitch uh but that you know it's very cordial like you you are there for work right so you you go there they 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 have a schedule they take you through it they make sure that you're okay for sure um and but then you do your work and then you leave <laughs> and that's it um but uh yeah so they they were it was a really efficient well-oiled machine there and they do take care of you that's amazing that's yeah. amazing were you nervous um more than usual yeah um i but not for the reason that i thought i would uh, or maybe not the reason that that people might think. Uh, mm -hmm. I wasn't nervous because of Penn and Teller, uh, even though it was my first time meeting them. Um, it was uh, that wasn't the reason because uh, you know I've, I've had the the luxury of talking with big name magicians over the last few years and performing some stuff. Uh, so that that um, I'm kind of desensitized to that uh, part of it. But the reason I was nervous is because I knew I had one shot. Right. Um, and I knew, you know, in the past, because I went on with Lightyear, right? I screwed up Lightyear in the past, right? And I was like, well, there's no reason I can't screw up now. So, uh, so that was the nervous, nerve wracking part. And I thought, because even if they don't, like, even if I, like, if I were to screw up on the first take, 
And uh, even if they were like, you know, we want to protect our investment, it, again, I'm putting words in their mouth. I don't know what they would have done. Uh, I imagine, though, if they spend enough money to get these people out here, um, they would want to protect their investment. So they would probably do a second take. But then you have no chance of fooling Penn and Teller. And then it feels like, uh, it feels just not as genuine uh, in, in that case. So I'm really glad and fortunate that it went pretty well the first time. Yeah. Um, fun fact, I, I don't think I'm uh, forbidden to, to share this. Teller wasn't actually there. He had COVID. <laughs> he had COVID during our no shoot. Way. Yeah. So I, to this day, I've never met Teller. He, he was zooming in live. So he's, you know, watched me on a screen uh, off site, but I've never met him. So, uh, so that everybody that filmed with me that day, uh, Teller wasn't there. I didn't know how they were going to handle Teller not being there. Um, so what, uh, what I thought was, how are they going to do this? Because they have uh, four different contestants that I'm, uh, that are part of each show, but that's not necessarily each episode though. Like the people I, with, that I filmed with weren't the people in my episode, mm. right? So, because they splice and dice it cause to make for compelling television. If all four of us didn't full pen and teller, that wouldn't be a good episode, right? If all four of us did full pen and teller, that wouldn't be a good episode, right? Um, so they, they splice and dice it. And then I was thinking, because if teller wasn't there, like how how would you go about that how, how would you do it so i thought maybe they put a like a disclaimer at the beginning of the episode but then i thought but i'm going to be with in that episode other people throughout the season that teller was there for right so like how do you do that so practically speaking i think they did the the only thing they could have which was yeah. put them in post i think they did a really good job with it because nobody that i told this to had any idea that he wasn't actually there. i didn't have any idea i mean that's incredible to me wow yeah. that's amazing and are you planning on doing any other type of TV type uh, thing coming up at some point in the future? Yeah, I would love to. Um, I, I have a, a contact with um, Masters of Illusion. And so I'm, I'm hoping to uh, get on there. Uh, I have uh, a condition that, you know, kind of uh, doesn't play for me, which is uh, I'm a, I, I think I said this the last time. Uh, that I did the, in the interview. I'm a WD squared. I'm, I'm a white dude with deck. Uh, so, <laughs> so um, you know, I, I love that television prioritizes uh, diversity and representation. I adore that. Uh, but I'm not diverse, <laughs> you know, and so like, I, you know, I am the, the uh, kind of the poster boy for uh, who, who used to be easily gotten on television and I love how we've gotten so far that uh, that we do go out of our way to get other people uh, represented as magicians you know people of color women uh, girls like I uh, young kids older people right I love that uh, so much to the point that it doesn't really bother me that much that that means I have to try that much harder to set myself apart um, mm -hmm. to get on the show um, so I, uh, so I'm, I'm working on non card things, uh, <laughs> but you know, at the end of the day, I'm a card boy. So, yeah. uh, so it's a little bit hard. So I have to kind of get, get away from my roots a little bit to stand out, but, uh, hopefully, uh, something will happen. I'm also not opposed to doing something like, uh, a, a got talent in the future as well, but it's nothing uh, immediate for sure. Okay. Well, I want to, I, obviously you've got some big news that you want to share. That's going to be coming up soon. I want to talk about that in a bit, but before we do, let, let's talk about some of the stuff that you've been bringing out and some of the tricks that you've been bringing out since I spoke to you. Because I mentioned this at the very beginning of the interview. You're a, you're a Penguin Magic Creator of the Year, which is a big deal, huge deal. Oh, you, you know that personally, don't you, Craig? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, okay, yeah. But I mean, yeah, but this, <laughs> yeah, I do. But, and that's the point. Very few people do get to be a penguin magic creator of the year because they are the largest magic shop in the in the world and it is voted for by the people that have bought the trick so it means right. so much when you actually get that accolade right and you can i mentioned this at the beginning you continue to bring out not just quality 
but such a diverse range of effects. You see a lot of people that bring out the same stuff over and over again, or variations on a theme. Like I think about what you've brought out through Penguin, Brainchild. It's a card routine, a killer brainwave, any card at any number style card routine. Then you've got Lightyear, which almost can't be described. Then you've got, <laughs> like in any way, shape or form. Then you've got Bill Effects. Then you've got this, then you've got that. Now, Tiny Dancer, which is like, um, like uh, anniversary waltz meets a shrinking card and <laughs> on the face and then you've got you know you've got you've got the post-it notes and 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 just honestly how do you do it is what i guess i'm trying to find out like how do you constantly bring out so many effects at such a high quality and and such an eclectic range of because you just said there i'm a card guy but brainwave, brain, brain child is one of the only card routines that I can think of that you've bought out that really I, it could be considered a card trick. Even stuff like Rainbow Road isn't really a card trick. It's like a packet, a packet trick. trick. It's a packet it's a trick. trick. But it's a packet trick on steroids. It's not a normal packet trick. <laughs> it's like, the imagination. Like, how do you do it, Kyle? Seriously. Um, yeah. Uh, so I, I guess to give you the, uh, the the realest answer I can, it would be. Um, I, I think if you knew what you're looking for, like uh, not you in particular, but anybody knew what they're looking for, uh, they would be able to see a thread that connects to all of my pieces. And it's, it's kind of a, almost all of my pieces, especially like, like the, the download pieces, uh, things like, uh, wholesome, which is that moving hold, the, the, um, Stick and Twisted, which is my torn and restored uh, post-it note. Um, the Hancock effect, like uh, Pips Leak, uh, those those kind of things. They all those in particular have a common thread, even though they're with different objects. Uh, even uh, stuff on my new download back in business, which wasn't done with Penguin, that was done independently. Uh, but all those have this common thread, which is they have um, each one of them. They're has an apparent condition where right before the magic happens and then the the method is you go back to the actual condition to reveal the magic right so in pips like you know again without going into any uh exposure for sure um right before the the pip moves it looks like the pip of the ace is in the middle of the card right we know that that's not the case and then the magic just takes you back to the actual condition where the two is actually there, right? Uh, Hancock effect, you're writing the name on the, on the bill, apparently un, under the arrow, that's the apparent condition, but then you do the magic and now you are showing the real condition. Uh, stick and twist is the same thing. They, they think they're signing on one part, but they're actually signing on the, the other part. You do the magic and now they're seeing the real condition, right? All, all these things, even though they're very different premises and using very different plots, they all have that o overarching theme of uh, getting yourself into a position where it looks like a very convincing uh, condition of what they think is uh, what they think it is. And then the the magic, uh, the, the actual method is just undoing that so they can see uh, if for what it actually is. Wow, that makes a lot of sense. That actually makes a lot of sense. And and you also have a habit, and I've talked to you about this before, but it'd be worth bringing up as we're talking about it. You have this habit of creating magic where it looks like there's a gimmick <laughs> and it's really not. Like you seem to have this ability of, of creating hyper-visual magic that you just would assume has a gimmick. But when you look at it, it's it's... I don't want to, it's sleight of hand, but not sleight of hand for sleight of hand's sake. It's right. not like you're doing a million moves for no reason. Everything has a reason and everything is very streamlined to achieve the effect you're trying to achieve. How, how, is that done by design? Um, uh, kind of, kind of. Um, the, the main thing... So I'll so uh, <laughs> I I promise I'm going to answer this question, but I'm going to back up a little bit so um, so you can kind of see where I'm coming from here. Um, when talking about creating a magic trick, 
I have an unpopular opinion, probably, uh, that I don't think it's hard to come up with a magic. I, I bet I could take someone off the street and say, in 10 minutes, you're going to create a method to a magic trick. Have no background in magic. I bet I could uh, get them to make a method for a magic trick 10 minutes or less. It would probably suck. It would be a terrible method, right? It wouldn't be reliable, wouldn't be practical, uh, might not even look good. Um, but it would be a method, right? And then that gets me to thinking, um, there's what makes a good magic method, right? And for me, I bet that that guy off the street, a girl off the street, uh, if if I instructed them to come up with, and they have all the resources in the world, and they have to make one playing card change into another card, right? they would probably, I would imagine, go down the route of like arts and crafts and they would, uh, which I'm not opposed to by any stretch, but they would probably go down that and, you know, I don't think it would even be that much of a quantum leap for someone who has no magic knowledge. If I put this uh, this um, objective in front of them, I don't think it would be that hard for them to come up with something remotely similar to a flap. I, I don't think, I, I just think that's fairly intuitive. And it's fine. I don't even have a problem with flaps. What I do have a problem with is complacency in magic because it's so precious to me. And when, and when we are saying, you know, this is the, like the, the, the greatest thing in the world and it's just a little prop that changes one thing into another or, or does something, but it's not examinable to me there's not it's not that's satisfying because anybody could just figure that out even if you don't have a comprehensive knowledge of magic which a lot of these creators do so what i'm saying is for me if i'm just talking about satisfaction i love the idea of coming up with something that is that looks like it has to use one of these apparatuses or an extra layer or a panel or a flap or something like that um and it not using that, uh, that's so much more satisfying because, because at the end of the day, if, if there is a card that changes by itself, unless that can be given out, that's not magic, in my opinion. Because if we're, talk, if we're talking live, if we're talking like Instagram performances or TikTok, that's, that's a whole nother beast, I, I get that. But if we're talking live, if, if a card just changes into another card and it's some sort of apparatus on it, if, if I can't give that to them immediately to show that it is a normal card, it's not magic. It's a puzzle. And it's a cool puzzle. Don't get me wrong. It's a cool puzzle. And, and I love it. I'm sure it goes around in really cool ways and, you know, super cool. But to me, the thing that really makes magic is the examinability factor. Now, does everything have to be examined all, always? No. It depends on the construct of the, of the routine, for sure. But... If something super visual happens, you know very well, they want to see that. And so I do kind of go out of my way to come up with a method that allows for them to instantly uh, check it out, right? So like I have a, um, uh, a, mo a moving hole effect with the business card on the target, mm -hmm. right? And the, the thing I, I, I personally, you know, again, just because I don't like something personally doesn't mean it's problem right so in in past there's a uh you know there's methods where you would bring in a gimmick card do a, a mo moving whole thing and then you put it on the deck and ring it out right there's not a problem with that that is a fine method but i think it enhances the effect so much more if that image that they see never goes out of their sight so if, if they see a hole and it moves and that card never leaves their sight when you give it to them to check out them, I think that enhances the deception of that illusion tenfold. So yeah, for, for me, it's not necessarily about not using gimmicks, but it is about the examinability factor. So that route to go from magic to examinability often includes no gimmicks. Yes, that's great.
you're giving a master class on creativity here in this interview. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. And I completely agree with you. Do you ever struggle with like um, inspiration or like, uh, 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 is that, uh, I, I've spoken to a lot of creators and they've said to the, so they've said to me, that's the biggest thing that they worry about. Like, look, you know, coming up for that initial spark of creativity and having that trick in mind that they can then work on a method for. Do you have any tips on, 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 on how to get inspiration or how to be more inspired? Yeah, that's a good question. No, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I did. Uh, I, I uh, just went through a pretty big lull. Um, and when, when I say lull, it's not, it's weird though, because like even in that lull, there's, there was stuff that came out of that lull. Um, but sometimes, you know, perception is reality. I, I fully believe that. And I sometimes, even when you feel uninspired, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And again, I'm talking, I'm talking about just the perception of it. To me, it doesn't matter how much actually comes out of it. Cause during that lull, there's like three, three releases that, that, came out but you know those are all just things that we're just kind of toying with and you know and it just seemed to like uh pop in one day but like for me i love it when i have this idea and i'm really striving for it i'm really working towards it uh sometimes it just pop into the head and you just kind of work on it but it doesn't there wasn't any singular inspiration or spark uh and that can be really frustrating um so then I, so even though I don't have any tips on how to get, how to get inspiration, um, I, uh, I do know um, in Francis Minotti's uh, DVD set, and uh, I'll give him full credit for this. This is not my idea. This is his. And uh, I'm, I hope he's okay with me sharing this um, is he talks about using like uh, idioms or expressions. Um, and uh, because idioms and expressions are inherently absurd right? I'm going to hit the road, uh, you know, kill two birds with one stone, right? And those, he, he says that they can often inspire um, different ways of thinking. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, because, uh, well, he, he has a routine called like two sides of every coin, right? Because that's, that's an expression. And then he was like, oh, well, what, what would happen if a coin only had one side? Oh, that'd be a magical looking coin. And so then he created this routine around uh, if you turn a coin this way, you can see it. If you turn it over again, it turns invisible. You can't see it because it only has one side. And then you turn it over again. Um, and so like those kind of things are uh, really cool. So like look at expressions and look at, uh, you know, just kind of the, uh, the intricacies of idiomatic language and see um, if something just kind of pops out to you. And uh, it won't necessarily lead to a method, but it might lead to a premise or a presentation. Wow. That's great. That's fantastic. I want to ask you one more question that's kind of related to creativity, but not completely. I imagine you've lost count of the amount of tricks that you've brought out now through various different companies. <laughs> um, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe nine, 10, 20. <laughs> I dig a guess. Yes. Yeah. I have lost count. <laughs> well, my question is do you have any advice? on how to pitch a magic company mm -hmm. because like that's the thing that people want you know there's a lot of people that are like hey i've created the trick but nobody wants it hey everyone said no i must have spoken to genuinely about 10 creators this week alone that have messaged me or spoken to me going what do i do i've spoken to all of these companies and nobody wants me as somebody who's worked with illusionist vanishing ink cosmo penguin like literally every big magic production company pretty much you've worked with yeah and have a great relationship with do you have any advice on getting your foot in the door or getting them to want to actually listen to you is there is there anything yeah i do have advice on this one um, okay <laughs> and that is uh first of all you got to reframe the uh the framework instead of saying nobody wants me you have to say nobody wants this idea at this time 
um, because you can't you can't inject yourself into this because then you are going to take it personally and then you might start to you know get a vendetta against a certain you know company and that that wouldn't be good. They're not saying no to you. They're saying no to this idea at this time. Um, they're you know and to be clear, I mean even in this past year, I've submitted things to a company and I got I got turned down as well. You know like it you know it's it never you know just we we live in this world where you know you see like release after release after release and so you see the successes but you don't see the times that people tell you no i've, I've been told no many times um and I always and, i always think about david jonathan with snaps uh you know the best the best one of the best tricks of all time as far as i'm concerned and he got turned down by almost every production company before penguin said yeah really i didn't know that that's funny yeah. He got turned down by everybody and their mother turned him down. Really? Well, and so that's the thing too. I mean, like, so you, you say foot in the door and you do need, un unfortunately, you know, I, I have I have arguably received fewer no's now than I did when I first started pitches, right? So so what, so what do you do? Um, first of all, I would say, <laughs> this might not be the, you know, the, the easiest pill to swallow, but be a bigger critic of your stuff than you think the company is going to be, right? So if you think that there is a uh, a gap or a hole in your pitch or, or a weak spot, you need to be more uh, critical of that than you think the company is going to be. So then go back, strengthen up that weak spot whether it be a presentational weak spot or a justification weak spot, or um, maybe a part in the in, in the prop or the apparatus, if, if, if there is one, um, or if there's a procedure work on getting that done, you know, be, be your own worst critic. Uh, and, and, you know, not, not to a point where it, you know, dampens your, your mental health. We don't want that, but get to the point where um, you scoured it so much that uh if they don't want it, that it's not because it hasn't been that well thought through, but rather it's just because it might not be a good fit. And that's the other thing. Sometimes it's just not a good fit for the for the place. I would never have pitched big picture deck to illusionist, mm -hmm. right? That is, they would they would have said no, and that's fair. That is not their brand. They have a very specific brand in mind, and that is not for them. Um, uh, and so now. Uh, Penguin uh, is like the Walmart magic, right? So they they they'll often say yes to more things. Um, now that's not and now that's not to say uh, they won't say no because they haven't. They they told me no a few times in the past, um, but there's often a reason. I, I was I was told no um, to Tiny Dancer from a, a different company because they don't like to do re refillables. Right? It wasn't that it wasn't a good trick or that it wasn't ready. Um, they just try to stay away from things that need refills or that uh, deplete over time. And that's totally fair. Um, there, um, there's one time, oh, I pitched a light, light year to another company one time. And they said no, just because they have another effect coming out with light. Um, which... And again, I, I don't know if it already came out or if it was, I, I don't know, it was years ago and I, I don't know what effect that was, but that that's that's what they said. So sometimes if, if they have things that are even remotely uh, similar, they, you know, they, they don't want to oversaturate that area of the market there. And, and I get that. Um, so, so those, those are some things that, you know, just, just consider those things. Um, and always, um, I'll, I'll leave with something that uh, David Williams said, David Williamson said in one of his lectures, um, which I think is really pertinent here. He said um, that he was in a, like an art class, I think college, uh, I could be making this up, uh, but he, he said uh, that he was working on this assignment, this, this, uh, this piece, and uh, he was really proud of it. And he worked so hard on it. And then his professor came over and just painted white all over it. And he was like devastated, which of course he would be, right? And, yeah. it's, and the teacher said, never fall in love with the first thing you make, which is kind of an a-hole thing to do, but I yeah. do appreciate the lesson. <laughs>
I do see the lesson. I do see the lesson. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I've thought about that many, many times. My very first release that I, uh, my very first big release was called Promotion and it came out in 2015. And um, it had a really, it had a lot of potential. And I rushed it to market because I knew, because I saw the potential in it and I rushed it to market and I found a company that was going to take it. A lot of companies said, no, I found one company that did. And the other piece of advice I would say is maybe listen to, to the nose, because if I would have listened to the nose, uh, then I wouldn't have rushed this out. My first major release wouldn't have gotten trash reviews. Um, and then it would have probably been sooner that I would have gotten to the next iteration of it. So now I do a version of it that requires no gimmick, uh, is a lot more visual, um, and uh, it's just overall a much better way of doing it. And I probably would have gotten there sooner uh, if I would have uh, listened to the majority as opposed to the, the single one that said what I wanted to hear. That's brilliant advice, it really is. What would you say was the, the trick that kind of, what's the word I'm looking for, kind of put you on the map? What was the trick that kind of made people sit up and go, okay, this is somebody we need to watch. Oh, so I've got yeah. something in mind. I want to know if... <laughs> well, um, Drop Call and Hancock Effect came out at the same time. And so I, it was... I was going to say Drop Call. Yeah, I would say Drop Call too. And what's funny is that's really not a Kyle trick. Uh, it's... Sorry, that probably sounded pretentious. A Kyle oh, trick. Yeah. No, but... <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. But it's, you know, it's, it's highly gimmicked. Um, and I'm to this day just genuinely surprised that I was the first person to get there with that. To, to me, there wasn't really a huge creative leap to think if I want to make a cell phone vanish from a case, how would you do it? Um, so like, even though I do drop call at every gig, literally, literally every gig, I'm not exaggerating. Uh, it's, the, it's the one original trick I do more than anything else. It's not even on my top five proudest creations because I know that if I didn't do it, someone else would have. Yeah. And um, which, which is great. Um, and well, that plus the fact that, you know, I, I, love, um, I love the idea of legacy. And, you know, you're not going to be around forever. I'm not going to be around forever. Um, and so, what are we going? how are we going to make sure that the legacy of Craig goes on, the legacy of Kyle goes on? Um, and Dropped Call is not a great uh, example of a legacy booster because yes. it's going to be obsolete very soon. I mean, all, already when I bring this out, people are like, really, an iPhone 10, you know, kind of thing. Um, it's just not a common phone anymore. I'm sure in the next 10 years from now, we might not even have uh, phones that even look like that. And they might be built into glasses. They, they might be, you know, something that's just on your arm. I don't know what, where technology is going, but uh, if that's certainly not a legacy booster. Um, so even though it sold really well, and right now I do it all the time, I know in 10 years I won't be doing it. Yeah. But I will be doing Hancock Effect. I will be doing Pipsleek. Right. And so like those those are the things that I'm a lot more proud of because I know that they will stand the test of time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But like you say, releasing drop call was a good thing to do, even though yeah. it's not one of those creations. Just being able to say I've worked with Illusionist. Oh, absolutely. And they were real. Listen, I know they have, you know, there's controversy that surrounds the e illusionists some people can't stand them some people love them i can say that they were fine to work with in fact they were more than fine to work with they they were really great actually they um they made sure that we were all uh take taken care of really nicely they did a great job on the on the production not only on the prop but on the video the tutorial was great you know cody nottingham was working with us at that point and he was excellent to work with as uh, we uh we filmed a lot of it in his house and his wife was so hospitable and got to meet with their kids. And um, 
it was just a really great experience overall. I have no issues or qualms uh, with working with them. You know, do do I agree with every single one of the business practices? Probably not. Um, but that's not really relevant. I, I I can say, I can say, my experience was great working. That's great. That's great. It's good to hear. Us uh, illusionists are like kind of turning things around recently. You know, they're creating a real buzz, which is good. So uh, long may that continue. That's great. And that brings us to kind of some news that we want to share. Yeah. A lot of creators will only ever just release stuff through uh, production companies, myself included. Um, but you um, have have taken the uh, decision recently to actually kind of branch out. And as well as continuing to work with other producers, you're actually going to start and have actually started releasing your own magic as well. That's right. can, we can we talk about this? Yeah. Uh, so I, uh, how, how do I want to start talking about this? Um, so we, my wife and I are starting a new business venture called Wow Magic. That's W-O-W Magic, which I couldn't believe was not taken. Uh, <laughs> it's such a good name. And I, I can't believe that it's not been taken. Um, so uh, I think we're going to try to trademark it. But uh, so if you're watching this and it's not trademark yet, Stop it. It's ours. <laughs> um, wow stands for weird, uh, outstanding, and wonderful uh, magic. And um, first and foremost, it will be a shop. Uh, we are we are in the process of getting a, a space, and it will be a brick-and-mortar magic store. And we will uh, be a, we'll be a, Murph, a Murphy's vendor and... Um, and as well as, because uh, Kelsey's also looking at, at a lot of, Kelsey's my wife, by the way, for viewers who don't know that. Um, Kelsey uh, was looking at some other wholesalers and um, and she found some really cool, like little artisan and things that are really um, magic related. So like there's this, especially for like kids, like, you know, you walk in, we want to have stuff for the professional, but we also want to have stuff that like, there's this like little, um, thing where you pop out and you make your own theater you make, make your own stage you know not a magic trick but like magic related and it's cute and it's charming and it's you know for the kids and the the um passers-by that you know just kind of oh well, it's a magic shop let's go in and, you know i feel like like those kind of things i think are really important as well in addition to that we are uh hopefully going to be um with this new platform, being able to do more independent releases. So we are already on the site. We have some of my previous independent downloads uh, that we've done together. Um, but I very much hoping that we can uh, take it to the next level and use uh, this platform to make more uh, physical products just through Wow Magic. Uh, and the the eventual goal would be to um, you know set up a table like a, de a dealer table at conventions and um kind of do that circuit wow so i have questions so first yeah. of all for people that don't uh don't know where are you based where you know where in continental us are you based so where would this i know you don't have an actual venue yet but yeah. when you actually do set up shop physical shop where in the us are you uh are you planning on opening yeah it's going to be in carlisle pennsylvania um, or, you know, that's that's where we're striving for, Carlisle, um, which is about 30, 35 minutes south of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. It's the capital. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so we're, we're in PA. And uh, so if you ever get out this way, uh, there's also a magic-themed hard cider bar called The Grand Illusion, uh, which is where I do um, strolling magic every Monday. Uh, but it's just such a cool place. They have such great ciders and, and they make stuff there. And so if you ever, so if we do in fact get our space out there, uh, while you're out there, you also got to get a pint at uh, the Grand Illusion. And I promise you won't be disappointed. Well, wait, you're turning Pennsylvania into the place to go. It yeah. is. It is the place to go. It's a cool spot. <laughs> it's amazing. And I, I, Let's talk a little bit about the uh, the stuff that you have on the site at the moment, because 
Uh, I am planning very, very shortly on doing a review show special uh, and, and looking at everything that you have on the site. But you have uh, a few different things at the moment, don't you? I'm trying to actually punch it up. Uh, first of all, tell everyone on the website. It's... Yeah, it's wowmagicshop.com. There you go, wowmagicshop.com. Now, on the shop, currently, you just have your four items that are all downloads. Um, but obviously, you are going to be... Um, you are going to be carrying a whole bunch of other stuff, including Murphy's items and everything, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's very much in its infancy stage right now, uh, but it is fully functioning. So uh, right now, because we are still, uh, you know, up and coming with this uh, business and being a full Murphy's uh, retailer right now, uh, it is really just a house for my downloadable videos. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now, I believe the three on there, besides Tiny Dancer, you can buy Tiny Dancer directly from me. Um, the three that are on there are um, the Hancock Change, which is different than the Hancock Effect. Um, we have Bling Link, and we have Back in Business. Well, let's talk about these three very quickly. What is the Hancock Change, and how is it different to the Hancock Effect? Yeah, so the Hancock Change, so the effects are totally different. Um, so the Hancock Change is a bill change. And conceptually, I call it the Hancock Change because conceptually, with the folding procedure, um, you are implementing kind of that same Hancock concept, but the way you get into it and out of it is very, very different. And it's a slow motion, uh, one to hundred uh, bill change. Mm. Wow. And yeah. So it's, so it's a, it's a really cool uh, and it's, it's satisfying to perform because it's, because it's, it's almost like the same satisfaction you get when you get one of those gimmicks that things like flap around and fold around and do, do all that stuff. Like, that's really cool. But with this, you get all that satisfaction with just two bills. And it's just sleight of hand and that concept. Wow, that's great. That's fantastic. And I, I believe this would probably work with international currency, but it does need to be foldable. So probably UK notes probably wouldn't be a great candidate for, for the Hancock change. But uh, I don't know if you, you've ever done you know something where you would say, hey, I just got back from the States. I got one of these. It's very common. And then you would just pass it out to a UK audience. Oh, yeah. I mean, I use American currency for pretty much everything when I'm performing, you know, so oh, really? half dollars, American bills, mm -hmm. just because I think it creates intrigue. I think it creates interest. That and listen, America's got our problems, but we've got some great currency for magic. Like mm -hmm. as as far as like bill magic goes, it's hard to beat American currency. They're we're all we're all the same size, we're very similar colors. That's paper, so it's foldable, it's rippable. It's like the best. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I completely agree. And there's so many gimmicks and some uh, perfect size for a thumb tip. It's just, it's just <laughs> right? yeah. perfect on so many levels. Uh, yes, I'm very jealous of your currency. Ours just goes from bad to worse every single time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just dreadful. Um, so uh, the next one that we can talk about, if that's okay, is Bling Link. Um, Bling. What is Bling Link? Yeah, Bling Link. <laughs> I know you said what is bling link, but it sounded like why is bling link? I'm like, man, that's too <laughs> philosophical for this later. <laughs> um, what is bling? So bling link is you fold up a dollar bill um, and you put your uh, ring on it. And then you can do a series of um, taking the ring off the bill and penetrating it back on and uh, and seemingly increasingly more impossible ways um and uh and it's all impromptu you borrow the bill you borrow uh you can borrow a ring i usually use my own ring just because i'm really comfortable with it uh but there's no there's no gimmicks with it uh because i don't know about you but like you know i when when someone gives me a ring to borrow and you do like something like garrett thomas's ring thing i'm like oh i don't know i like doing my own because i know where it rests on my own finger right and then you know so if you get one ring it might not reach here and then another one goes all the way back here then you have to like slightly adjust your angles and things like that and i don't want to have to think so all dollars kind of work the same but not all rings do so i usually use my own ring but you absolutely could because it only requires one ring and it's ungift. 
That sounds like a really awesome version of um, like ring and wand. That, like, yeah. and wand. I think of it like a like a ring and string kind of routine, but yeah. uh, just more organic because you can borrow ev uh, everything. But you're also using uh, properties of the bill uh, that you, you couldn't. So you couldn't do like the first phase with a string or or a wand. Like it has to be a bill. Okay. That and then sense. and then there's some phases that you know do borrow directly from like a ring and string. Um, but uh it's that really is that first phase I, I really like that's really special, I think, because you can show uh pretty much all angles and you take the ring and you just melt it straight on uh, to the fold of the bill. Wow. And then you have I've seen you perform this over Zoom, and it's one of my favorite things that I've seen you do. And I was convinced there was a, a gimmick and there's actually no gimmick in play, which is it, it's ridiculous, Kyle, that you came up with a way of doing this with no gimmick. Like uh, we're talking about, back <laughs> business, right? This is. Yeah, back, back in business. This, this is strong effects. This is my favorite uh, one of the three. Now, there there is a fourth one, too, we're putting up and I'm going to send it to you for the review show special. Um and that, I'd love to talk about that one too, but uh, back in business is probably my favorite um, because this is that, this is exactly what I was talking about, um, which is you are just wringing out that magic sponge. You get so much magic for such a little method. Uh, and I really love that. So um, this is, it's a concept. So it's a collection of three effects that you can do with this uh, this concept that I'm calling the PLUS principle. Um, and you'll figure out what that stands for uh, in the instructional video. And basically it's a conglomeration of a few different principles all working in tandem or in concert together um, that allows you to do super visual things like uh, flick a genuine hole from one end of the card to the other end. And with, and with that card never leaving your sight, you can uh, give it out to them for examination. You do the same thing with a torn or sword. You can tear off the corner of a card and there's the signature the whole time. So they can see uh, the signature and the torn corner in, in the same frame. It's not like, you know, you, you show a torn corner, then you, you know, then you turn it over, you see the signature. No, you see, you see it all together on the same side. And then you just take the corner and you fuse it back. And again, you yeah. can just give them the card. And uh, the last one is an impromptu version of uh, Matt Johnson's Melt um, that usually requires a gimmick. Um, but in this case, it is impromptu if you have a stack of business cards. Wow. And, and it's uh, fully uh, credited to Matt and he has uh, let me put it on there with his full blessing and endorsement. That's great. That's amazing. And that's one of the things I said this for, at the very beginning of the interview. You don't release anything unless it's been worked into the nth degree. Like it has to be fully worked in in order for it to be released, regardless of whether it's through a company or through yourself. You know that right. when you get a Kyle, Kyle Purnell product, it's going to have had everything. It's going to be the best it can possibly be. Absolutely. And but I, so I'll say that, but I also said so that is true. I don't release anything that hasn't been worked in. But I will say um, that I I personally don't believe. Now I'm going philosophical here. Uh, I don't personally believe that in, in order for a effect to be um, a great effect, that that means the the uh, the magician has to perform it all the time. So like, I don't stroll with Lightyear pretty much ever. Um, it's one of my proudest, it's, it's like the opposite of dropped call. It's like one of my proudest creations, but I never do it mm. um, because it doesn't really suit me as a performer. Mm. I, I came up with the idea and I knew it had to be done. So I worked really hard to make it a thing but it doesn't mean that if suits me and my performance style and my pacing and, and what I want to share with my audiences in particular, mm -hmm. um, I am so happy that it is finally a thing. And actually I do it in my stage shows. So we, we have like the jumbo version now and I have a big 
um, uh, stand that you put the the like your tiles in. Uh, but uh, it, this is an idea of my uh, my father in law. Actually, he made the stand look like a pair of red glasses, uh, so you get the the branding in there, which is awesome. And that's a great idea. And so, so I do it on stage, and it looks great on stage. Um, but the close-up version, I I rarely do. Um, but it's not because it's not a great trick. It just doesn't suit me. It's it's the same thing as if like Bruno Mars writes a lot of songs and he sings a lot of his own songs. But there's some songs he writes that he knows that need to be released, but he knows that he's not the one to do it. So he sells it to other artists. Um, so that song still is out there, but he knew that he wouldn't be the right person for that song. It's the same kind of thing for me. Wow. That's great. Yeah. Again, I totally see where you're coming from and I, I can relate to that as well, to be honest. Um, you said there's a fourth one that's not on the site as well. Yeah, it's uh, it's it should be up shortly. Uh, and even maybe by the time this goes up, it might even be on there. Um, but it's called um, Cash Grab. This is also one of my favorite ones, too. Um, this is just a super commercial um, piece where you... Uh, because you can get into it anytime. It's a great finale to a card routine. So you have, uh, so you're doing your card routine, sign card routine, ambitious card, what have you. Uh, then you borrow a bill, okay. um, and then you fold the bill in half. This one I think will work with polymer notes. I, I've not tried it, but I'm fairly certain. Right, because with. nothing else does. <laughs> <laughs> because polymer notes don't like crease, right? That's the problem, right? I don't I can I, put a crease in them, but they're very hard to get a crease in. Yeah. I'm going to say you don't, it would be better to do with American currency, definitely. But I'm going to guess that you probably could get away because all you really have to do is fold it in half. Um, you could do and, that. Yeah. You have to fold it in half to a point where it would not spring open fully. I, I think you could. It might be a little fumbly. I'm, I'm not sure. I've not tried it with UK currency, but. Um, Basically, you take the bill and uh, it melts into the deck. And when you spread through, then you have uh, you see the where the bill landed, but is now wrapped around the signed card. Wow! Uh, and you open it. Then you take the signed card out of the bill, and then really fairly, you can see uh, that the bill is empty when you uh, take a stapler out and you staple the middle of the bill. So you're stapling the two halves together. Yeah. Then you take the uh, card and you put it back inside the deck and then super visually even with a staple together you flick it and then a card appears in the bill but now it's stapled inside wow. so you and so now it's fully stapled it's not an illusion you can give them the stapled bill with their signed card inside as a souvenir that's amazing that's incredible i really want to see that that's great. I, I will send it to you. Thank you, Carl. That sounds amazing. So you've got four tricks on the site, four downloads, and obviously the incredible Tiny Dancer, which I'll be reviewing soon, but is, you know, I, I it annoyed me when I saw the uh, Tiny Dancer because I've been trying to work out a way of doing an ambitious, uh, an anniversary waltz with both signatures on the face for a long time. <laughs> and I saw you do this, and I was like, yeah, he nailed it. He's nailed it completely. And he's thrown a shrinking card in there as well, just because he can. So, I mean, it was such a great trick. It really is. If people haven't got it, they need to pick it up because there's so much strong, you know, it's it's just so strong. And the fact that you've got all the refills that you need so you can do it a ton, it's just great. Thank you so much. Uh, it is, it's one of those things where it's it's not a toy, right? So, like, it's so you're you're gonna it's not one of those things where you know you get the trick in the mail and you're like oh i can't wait to play with my new toy. it's not a toy right it's not fun uh it's it's satisfying and if if you are a professional and you're looking for a really unique way to end your signed card routine i mean it's hard to beat this um but just like brainchild right like brainchild comes in through your post and you're like oh man i have to work at this right it's not it, it doesn't like it's it's not self-working it's not a fun gadget but it's killer and it gets crazy reactions if you put the work into it um 
so that's uh, yeah. So that's tiny the answer. So when are we expect? So I suppose several questions. When are you expecting to take the uh, website Wow Magic to the next level? When are you going to be? Uh, you know, as you release more magic, that's going to appear on the site. When are you expecting it to kind of roll out? the more traditional wholesale items, you know, when, yeah. when uh, do we have a time frame for that? Yeah. So uh, definitely by the end of this year, we're going to be fully up online. Um, hopefully by summer of 24, that's kind of our time frame for hopefully getting a, a brick and mortar spot. Um, that That is certainly you know, not something I won't quote it on because uh, things can absolutely change. Uh, timelines can be pushed back, things like that. But mm-hmm. Um, that's, uh, that, that is our plan currently to, uh, to have a brick and mortar spot, uh, by summer of 24. Wow. That's amazing. Exactly. That's so cool. That really, (laughs) and, and outside of that, like, are you planning on releasing everything independently now, or are you still going to be working with other production companies on other stuff as well? Yeah. So there's, um, for down downloadable videos, uh, it's going to probably just be independent uh, at this point, right? Because there's really no, there's not much of an investment on my end. Uh, mm-hmm. But you know, but uh, royalties, you get a lot bigger percentage if you do it um, independently, especially if you put it on like the big platforms like Penguin. But if you don't work it, but if you don't do it through Penguin, but you just put it on Penguin, it, you 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 get a lot more. Uh, in return if you do it independently so uh, we have all the resources to do that so we're going to keep doing that Um, but for uh, physical products uh, I would say like there's uh, something that I just showed you before we did the the interview uh, and I would love to say that I think we could do it uh, independently but I'm just not convinced it's a pretty uh, intricate yeah what you showed me is a bit mental (laughs) I think it'd be a very difficult thing to produce on your own. It's it's got a lot of moving parts, right? Yes. Uh, so I think that's going to be that's going to have to be something that we go through uh, a different company with. But um, but with uh, with more uh, simple things, uh, definitely something that I'm going to uh, that we're probably going to do ourselves. Wow, that's great. That's fantastic. And do you have another release coming out through a penguin or a vanishing at any point soon? Or uh, I have. I am the, the only thing that's currently in the works is um, something through Cosmo, actually. And uh, yeah, that's great. It's it's wild to work with, with Cross. Yeah, great. he is great. And uh, so it's going to be a full. Do you remember on the elimination experiment there was a um, there was a bonus routine called calculator cards? Calculator cards. That was great for me. That was as good as the main routine, if not in some ways better. Like it was killer, and a lot yeah. of people didn't know about it because it was just tucked away as a little right. bonus item. But it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> so. I think, so it's one of those things that, again, if we're talking about like my top five favorite, that's, that's, that's in my top five. Uh, But again, I don't do it that much uh, because historically you would have needed a table, a lot of table space. You need the packet of cards plus a full deck of cards. Um, And, uh, and you need an audience that has already bought into the fact that you're good. Right. And so, if we're talking about being commercial, it's not nearly as commercial as the elimination experiment. If we're talking about just a pound for pound, kick them in the teeth uh, routine with just multiple climaxes, I mean, it's 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 one of my favorite routines because I'm so I'm so proud of the structure that I was able to build into it and everything. Uh, you know, it's it's all self-contained in this pack. You just go through the sequence of moves and everything just kind of goes. Uh, where it needs to go uh, and there's so many built-in revelations um, that I'm just really proud of this routine the reason I'm telling you this is because we're uh, in the process of making because that one in the elimination experiment is the bonus so you would just take some cards yourself and write on the backs of the cards we now have uh, professionally made um, calculator cards cards wow. and, 
so not only do they look so much better now and they actually look like the like the clock font right like the actual digits which is what i've always wanted uh but they are so it's on the backs of the cards but like if it's a three there's also like little indices of threes in the corners which is a game changer because now you can do it in the hands you can do it strolling because now i don't have to spread them out i can just spread them in my hand to a one-handed fan and you can see the indices spell out eight or 18 or, or sorry nine or 18 or what have you so um so that that was a game changer so um I'm not sure when that's going to be out. Uh, it's actually in my my uh, court right now to kind of go to the next step here. So uh, I'm actually glad we're talking about this because it reminded me I have to reach out to some people. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see that. Like I say, I was a big fan of the uh, the, the the original, so I can't wait to see the uh, the updates. Now, one other question, Kyle. Yeah, uh, and this has been an incredible interview, but I've got one other question which is, can people sign up to some sort of mailing list? Absolutely. Do you, do you ship uh, domestic? Do you ship internationally? Like, uh, when you start shipping, what's the plan? Um, just so that people, you know, I know you're a huge figure in this industry. A lot of people love you, rightfully so. Um, and I know a lot of people are going to want to support you. So how can we support you? What can we do to support you? Where are you shipping? How can we sign up for a mailing list? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so first of all, thank you for, for even having me on this interview. You, uh, I, I love what you do to support other uh, magicians and creators for on your channel. It's amazing. And uh, I really love what you do. Um, so you can go to kylepurnellmagic.com um, and there is an active mailing list uh, there that's going to pop up. One, one of the first things that pops up uh, and you can type in your email. And uh, I promise we don't spam. In fact, it's almost a problem how much we don't spam. Uh, we, we probably need to be more active uh, with how much we send out. Um, but, but that should tell you that if we send something out, it is, it's important. It's a big, uh, it's a big announcement or uh, maybe a, a new product um, or a promotion or something that's going on uh, there. Um, we... Actually, hold on one second. Uh, my wife is here. I'm not going to ask her to go on camera, but I will ask. Uh, is is there currently a WOW uh, mailing list, or is that going to be up in the near future? Um, if it's not, it will be up in the very near future. The WOW one will be up in the very near near future, and you will be able to get to it by going to wowmagicshop.com. Wow, that's correct. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I love the name. I love the name. That's awesome. It's hard not to say it. It's great. <laughs> and are you going to be shipping everywhere? Where are you going to be shipping, Carl? I yeah, know it's well, very early doors right now, but I mean, do you have thought process on that? Uh, we we will ship everywhere, but of course, international will be uh, significantly higher. Of course. Yeah. And, and at the moment, the downloads don't affect that. You can obviously get absolutely them. not. Nope. And yeah, so and as things come in, uh, so we'll we'll try to have everything that uh, we do, like even the stuff that I've previously done with Penguin, we're going to be putting that on the site as well. Just remembering that the, the WOW site right now is very much in this infancy stage. So there's a lot more that we're going to put on in the very near future. So keep an eye out. And when the, uh, the mailing list goes up, make sure that you uh, sign up for that. And we'll keep you updated. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. And to finish this whole interview off, you're also lecturing as well. Uh, your lecture is amazing. Your Penguin Magic lecture was fantastic. You've lectured at some very high profile events. You know, Magic, Mag, uh, Magic is it Magic Fest up in Columbus? Is it Magic? Mag Fest? Yeah, Magic Fest. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know that you were there and a bunch of other places. If people want to book you for a lecture, whether that be a club lecture or that be, uh, you know, a convention, are you available? And how did they reach out? Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm in the again even more infancy stages. So I it's not even something that I uh, was going to bring up, but uh, since you asked, uh, it is it is hopefully going to happen soon where I'm going to put together a, a states tour. Um, and uh, so hopefully that'll happen uh, pro probably late next year, I would guess. Uh, so late 24. So I'll, I'll be doing a domestic, a domestic tour is the plan. Nothing's uh, settled yet. Nothing's solidified, 
at all. Uh, but that that is the plan there. I can tell you um, that even though I can't go into details, um, if you are on the other side of the pond than me, you might be seeing me lecture very soon. Really? Now that's exciting. That's very, very exciting. Because, I, I, you know, we've known each other for a long time. I'm a huge fan, but I've never seen you lecture live. So I don't care where you are. It makes no difference. If you're anywhere in this country, I'm going to get there. Even if I have to hitchhike, I don't care. I'm getting there. So <laughs> I'm getting there. That's amazing. Kyle, you are an inspiration to this community. You really are. The uh, you I, and I, I talk to people about this all the time. You are what every creator should strive to be. Uh, you're ethical. You're honest. Your creations are just really very, very different to anything else out there. They're eclectic. You handle yourself absolutely perfectly with such diplomacy and grace and, uh, you know, every single accolade that you have achieved and you continue to achieve uh, is well deserved. And I want to thank you for coming on the channel. And I, I, I'm not going to wish you success with WoW Magic because I just know that you guys are going to absolutely smash it out of the park. And I know for one, I'll be supporting you. If there's ever anything I can do on this channel to help you, I will. Um, the uh, you know I'm going to be reviewing all of your items, but just like everything I've ever seen, I know it's going to be brilliant. But yeah, you you you're great, Kyle. You're great. Oh, thanks, Craig. You're great too, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate our time together. Before we go, I have to ask the question that everybody's been wanting to know. Yeah. This entire interview. I think I know where this is going. I have to ask. Yeah. The elephant in the room. Yeah. Why are we not wearing red glasses, Kyle? <laughs> I was going to be so impressed that you didn't ask me. Oh, but man, <laughs> we're so close. <laughs> um, and, the, and the reason was uh, because the actual reason for why I don't have red glasses right now uh, is such an anticlimactic answer uh, that it's, it's I, you're going to be so disappointed when I tell you. Go on. Uh, so the answer is, I have severe ADHD, significant uh, executive dysfunction, and I just can't find them. <laughs> <laughs> They're in the house somewhere. Uh, I Usually these are for non-magic purposes, and the red ones are for when I gig uh, and do magic. I was, I was looking for them. I couldn't find them for the interview. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So these are for play. The red ones are for work. But for right now, I just cannot for the life of me find them. This is going to be one of the only appearances to the magic community where you're not wearing red glasses. I know, I know. I can't believe I'm it. Sure I, you have a red I feel dirty. I'm sure you've got a red Sharpie marker around somewhere. Oh, that's true. Man, you see, this is why I keep you around, Greg. Five minutes with a red Sharpie marker and you're golden. <laughs> <It's good. laughs> Amazing. Kyle, thank you so much. Don't forget everybody that's watched this interview. Uh, you can go over and check out uh, the the new online shop by going to wowmagic.com. Ma wow magic wow magic shop. Shop. Wowmagicshop.com. Uh, keep looking for a mailing list. Sign up for that as soon as it appears. But in the meantime, go to Kyle Purnell Magic, sign up to that mailing list. And then if you haven't done already, go and buy everything Kyle's ever put out. Start on the stuff on his website. And then go and get uh, everything else. Big picture is amazing. Everything you put out is amazing. Um, yeah. Thank you once again for jumping on the channel. I really appreciate it. And hopefully I'll be seeing you very soon. And I'll be able to actually finally watch you lecture live. I'm very excited about that, Carl. It's going to happen. Awesome. Carl, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Guys, do me a favor. Leave a comment down below. Let Carl know what you think. Like I said, subscribe to everything that you can subscribe to that's got Carl's name on it. Go and buy all of his stuff. Uh, and I will be back again very, very soon with another interview. Uh, but on behalf of Kyle Purnell, the legend himself, my name's Craig, and I'll see you again soon on another Talk Magic right here on Magic TV. Catch you soon, everyone. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.